Hey guys, welcome to Wood Magazine Shop. My name is Kevin. Today I want to shoot a little video on veneering. Uh, we've got a project coming up in a future issue, which we built this clock, which if you notice has a kind of interesting grain on the, on the uh, face. And this is simply just a veneered clock face. I'm doing it on a half inch MDF and creating this little interesting pattern. Um, super easy to do doesn't require a whole lot of fancy tools. I want to show you guys how to do that, so here we go. I've got the veneer glued onto my uh, substrate and it's ready to turn into a clock face. I want to kind of go through the process of how I actually got to this. What, I'm, what I ended up here with is a 6x6 six six, uh, clock face. What I'm going to do is I want to start with a slightly larger piece of uh, substrate. This is 6.5x6.5. Uh, this half inch MDF. You can use any any plywood you want to use. I just just had this, which works really really great because it's flat. I start with an oversized one. So when I place my veneer on here, um, basically I want my veneer staying back from the edge a little bit. That way I can trim it uh, a lot easier without having to cut the veneer or have a chance of of, of of breaking the veneer off when I'm trimming it to final size. So start with oversized blank. And then I happen to have a little bit of uh, veneer left over from this process. What I've done is I've made a strip, and I would make a strip that's long enough to where I can get the four pieces I need out of this. And I have trued both edges uh, to where the, the, the width of this is uh, roughly uh, three and an eighth, three and a quarter, somewhere in that neighborhood. It's oversized, again, of what I, have, I will need in the final product. Kind of how I get to this point, one of the things I like to do, I can use two pieces of hardwood. They've got a nice flat edge on one side. What I'm, what I'm doing is I can line up the hardwood pieces with that veneer just protruding just a bit outside of those pieces of hardwood. Um, and then I would basically clamp this together. You could certainly clamp this together with two clamps and then run this across your joiner if you wanted to. But if you don't have a joiner, this is a great way, an easy way of getting a really, a really nice edge to start with on your veneer. Sanding block, basically I'm just gonna keep running it back and forth along that edge until this is perfectly flush. It gives me a nice clean edge. The next step I would do is I'd have that, that flat edge is I could come back and I would cut that veneer to final width. I've already done that, but I'm just gonna show you kind of what I would do. I would measure over, lay my rule down, and I would cut this with a veneer saw. When I'm cutting veneer, lengthwise like this uh, with the grain. It's a little better to use a saw. You're going to have a little better success with this, especially when you're dealing with wood grains that have uh, open grains or very pronounced grains. The knife, if you try to use this, may want to try to follow those grains instead of following your straight edge and it may wander off course. So the saw, which is actually just, you're kind of sawing through it, much better method of cutting along the grain as opposed to across the grain. That's when I use the utility knife. So let's say I've got this piece cut to final width. Now I'm going to start cutting off the chunks I need. I'm just going to use this scrap piece of plywood. I like this one. I'm not tearing up my bench. And two, it gives me a place to put my ruler against or my square against. I've checked to make sure my end is square. And then I'm just going to measure over basically the distance, which is the width of this veneer, because I want these to be perfectly square. And then I'm going to cut this to, to length. And I'm going to use my utility knife for this. I'm going to cut from one side to the other, but then I'm going to start on the other side and cut towards the middle. I'm not going to cut all the way through. And, and I'm not pressing down really hard either, guys. I'm basically taking light passes until that veneer breaks free. And the reason for cutting for both edges is if I don't, Sometimes if you're cutting across here, that may catch this edge and break out. So when you're cutting towards the metal, you're going to have a better chance of getting a nice clean cut. Now that I have all four of my pieces cut, I'm going to start putting these together uh, in the pattern that I like. And I'm just going to arrange these visually how I would like them before I start taping them together. You can see I've already got two taped together. I'm going to repeat what I just did there on the top, making sure that top edge that's going to mate in the middle, those are flush. And I'm pulling those together with that tape. I'm just using painter's tape here. The blue tape, green tape, whatever you have uh, works really well. Masking tape works pretty good too. All right, 
I don't use veneer tape that often because it tends to leave a bit of a mess. So I'm just lining up all those points, the middle, so those all bisect each other, and then I'm going to tape across this. Making sure I pull these veneer pieces together so I get a nice tight seam. I'm stitching larger pieces of veneer together, sometimes I will actually run a piece of tape clear down the seam. That's fine too. Um, what it does is just make sure you hold those together. I don't always do it with these smaller pieces, but we can go ahead and do that. One thing I make sure I do is basically trim that tape back. I don't want that accident getting, getting tucked up underneath my, uh, my veneer when I'm gluing it down to my substrate. Now that I've got that taped up and it's ready to go, notice my veneer is slightly smaller than the substrate. That's fine, okay? So the other thing when I'm doing veneering a panel, I need to have a backer veneer or a veneer that goes on the other side because I'm gonna, I want this to have equal amounts of veneer on each side so this panel stays perfectly flat. It doesn't matter if you use the same type of veneer, what I need to do, this piece of veneer is slightly larger than I need. So I'll show you the technique with this saw. I'm gonna cut off just a little bit of veneer here. Notice so I'm just pulling that saw nice and easy towards myself. Okay, and then I'm going to cut a little bit of the length as well. Using my straight edge and my square here on the edge here. So next step is I need to get some glue onto my panel and we'll get these glued up and I'll show you how I glue these together, how I put it in a little mini press, okay? So I'm ready to glue up my panel. I've got my substrate, it's clean. I've got some wax paper uh, and a couple calls that are slightly larger than my, uh, my final piece here that I'm gluing up. And of course I've got my two pieces of veneer that I'm gonna glue on. I'm going to use uh, Type Bond Cold Press uh, glue. For something this small, I've used any Type Bond. Type Bond 1, 2, or 3. There's also a glue called Better Bond. I any of these work fine. The, the, the reality is, is you're, you're going to be gluing this up pretty fast, so the open time is not really that big of a concern. This glue is formulated for veneering, so that's why I'm going to use this. Uh, just show you this. I'm going to apply a little bit of glue and it's always easier to add more glue than take it away. I'm using this little uh, foam roller. Uh, you can buy these anywhere on Amazon. Uh, veneer supply stores have these as well, but uh, what this does is basically, I can wash this out, reuse it, but this is a great way to really move glue around. And you can see I can get a nice even coat. You notice I didn't put a whole bunch of glue on there. You don't want to do that. You don't want to overdo it because that glue can bleed through your veneer and that be a big problem. So I get one side glued up. It doesn't matter which one goes on first. We're going to flip this over and I'm going to add glue to this side. When you're doing bigger panels, sometimes I will add tape and after I get the other piece of veneer, I'll tape that veneer just so it'll stay in place and won't move around while I'm putting it in a press or a vacuum bag. We're just going to use a homemade press today. All right, moving it around. Looks like I got a good coat on that. And put our backer veneer in place. Let's check the other side, looks good. Wax paper. Make sure the wax paper covers your veneer. To the, clear to the edges, because that would be disappointing that you glue that to, the, uh, to your press. And at this point, we're just going to start clamping that in place. You can add as many clamps as you want, as many as you want to get on there. Honestly, I've found that something small like this you don't have to get too carried away you know four or five six clamps like this really do a great job 
I'm gonna do a couple more here, maybe one more just for good measure here. So I'm gonna let that sit in that press. Um, for this, I probably would let it sit there for, for maybe a half hour to 45 minutes, and then I would remove it. Um, because I left the edges of my substrate proud of my veneer, I can now go to the saw, table saw, and true up all the edges, cutting it down to final size of, of six by six. Hope this video has been helpful. We'll see you in the shop soon.